Welcome! I'm Daniel Pohl, CEO of ImmerVR, and in today's video we're going to talk about the top 20 features why you should get Immer Gallery and make it your best virtual reality image viewer. Now let's start with feature number one, that's the automatic image format detection. For virtual reality, there are various image formats you can watch, and these are also available in 2D, they're available in 3D. For the spherical content, different representations are possible. The way the formats are stored, like where is the left eye view, where is the right eye view, they can be arranged differently. Other image viewers, they make you go through these hoops to set all these little choices manually. And it consumes a lot of time, you have to do it for every single image. And that's where Image Gallery comes in, where we have the automatic image format detection. That means you put your picture into Image Gallery and it will automatically detect the image format for you. The second very important feature is image quality. In a virtual reality, there's two criteria which are very important when you watch your VR images. And one is, they should be sharp, they should be in high resolution. And the second one is, when you move your head around, they shouldn't be flickering like crazy. We directly adjusted the viewing experience to the screen resolution of your head-mounted display. So that means we have both. We have sharp images and we have the least amount of flickering. Feature number three is that we have over 250 high-quality sample images. Of course, it's great when you watch your own photos, but when you watch content from others, you can get good inspiration, like how did they capture these images, what did they capture, what works well in 3D. Feature number four is that you can download galleries from others. Sharing is caring here. So if you have a great gallery and you want to share it with someone else, you probably would need to send it over email, give some complicated instructions. What you can do instead is here, you can zip your gallery up into one file, then you upload it on a host, and this URL you have to access it. You give it to a friend who can directly enter it in Image Gallery. Feature number five is that you have smart and meaningful thumbnails. So the thumbnails you're using to make an informed decision which image to click. So it needs to give you some reasonable information. And because we have feature number one, the automatic image format detection, it actually means that we know what the image is and how it's built inside. So for example, for a 3D image where you have side by side, the left half represents the left eye picture, right half the right eye picture. Thumbnails from other apps, they're just taking this with the two images and just compressing it down to a single thumbnail, which is very tiny and small. Other viewers we've seen, they just take the center of the image, which doesn't make any sense in this case. So what you really want, and that's what we're doing is, in this case, we know we have almost the same information twice, left and right. So we just take it from one area, we downsize it reasonably, and also our thumbnails are much larger in resolution, so they help you in making a better informed decision when you pick your thumbnails. Feature number six is giving an ambient surrounding for your low field of view images. So if you have a regular image taken from a smartphone or regular camera, then we can display it, of course, on a virtual cinema wall. But the immersion doesn't stop here. We provide you with an ambient background in the same colors as your same image. So when you look at these images, it looks much more immersive because your experience doesn't stop immediately at the cinema wall borders. It goes beyond. Feature number seven is that you can customize a lot in image gallery. For example, you can customize the distance to the virtual cinema wall. You can decrease it, can increase it, and very easily just by moving your thumbstick. Furthermore, you can change what start environment you have when the app opens up. You can change the start sound as well, so it gives a different impression, for example, classical music or corporate music. And some of our users have a fear of height called acrophobia. But of course, we still want them to enjoy our experience as much as possible. So in cases where we show a flat cinema screen, we have an option where we can add an artificial floor under the user. So in this case, even if you have a fear of heights, you feel still stable standing there while you watch the images and enjoy them. Feature number eight is that you can add an extra image onto your controller. And for example, you can have a secondary image where it just shows you in VR on your controller an extra information, for example, a bird's perspective. You can also use it to show a map, like where has this picture been taken. But speaking of showing a map, well, so far you had to do it manually in Emma Gallery. In one of the next updates, we will enable dynamic live mapping. That means from the metadata of the image, we extract the GPS coordinates and we have a dynamic map which will show where this picture has been taken and you can change the zoom levels. Feature number nine are customizable images. For every image, we can add voiceovers. We can add backgrounds to it. So you have a really good audio experience, so it's not just a visual experience. Furthermore, we can change various special effects for images. For example, we have a snow special effect and we have a rain special effect. 
We also have a special environment which represents a meadow environment where some butterflies are flying around. You can see some dust and some pollen flying around. And we have seasonal environments. For example, for Halloween, we have a special environment. We have one for Christmas. And we even have an underwater environment. Feature number 10 is that you can have immersive galleries. For VR photos, you usually have high resolution. You don't get any motion sickness from it. You have a low file size, maybe 10 megabyte per image, but you don't have audio, so it's a pretty static experience. On the other hand, you have VR video. Usually it has lower image quality. Many VR videos, unfortunately, are causing motion sickness and you need a very high file size. However, in video, you automatically have audio and you can capture all kinds of dynamic content. We create a class in between the immersive gallery and we take the best from both parts into one world. We do have the high image quality. We don't have the motion sickness. We still have the low file size. We are adding audio to it. And we have at least some dynamic components. For example, the special effects or just the consecutive order of different images gives it a dynamic feeling as well. Feature 11 is that we have a clear folder structure with alphanumerically sorted images. While this might sound obvious, of course you need this, but you would be surprised there are image viewers out there which do not have a clear folder structure. Feature number 12 is to show you the EXIF data. Many images contain metadata with interesting things in it. For example, which camera took the image? Which lens was taken? What are the exposure times? What aperture was used? Feature number 13 are the favorites. Of course, everyone has favorites in their images and you can easily mark them in image gallery. Feature number 14 is support for UPnP. This stands for Universal Plug and Play, sometimes also referred to as DLNA, and it references to home media servers where you can store your image data. So instead of copying it all onto your space-limited virtual reality headset, you access it remotely over Wi-Fi, for example, within your same local network at home. Feature number 15 is special camera hardware support. So we are closely monitoring the market, which VR cameras are coming out, do they need any special treatment? And for example, when the Canon 5.2mm VR180 stereo lens came out, we were excited about it, but we also quickly noticed because the lenses are relatively large, when you take your image with the two views, one for left eye, one for right eye view, your left eye view, for example, will also closely see the right lens. So when you move your head in VR to the right, you will see a huge lens. It's not stereoscopically correct. And that means you can get eye strain from it or motion sickness. So we did special treatment for that. We have a special format. And when we detect the picture has been taken with this lens, we automatically crop the borders. So you get the best viewing experience out of this. Feature 16 is support for cylindrical panoramas. You've probably done this yourself. Phones often have a mode where you can take a panorama. You start at one side, you slowly move and you get a panorama out of it, which is in a cylindrical format. And then when you try to watch it on a phone, it's a little bit disappointing because, well, your phone screen is so small and you want to watch the full panorama. It's not a good experience. However, virtual reality, the screen is as big as you can imagine. So we support cylindrical panoramas in VR. You can directly put in your image and look at it in a huge cinema wall. And you can change the opening angle to adjust it so it really fits like exactly to what you've captured before. Feature 17 is about customizing rotations. When you have a 360 degree image, you can of course look around in a 360 image by rotating your head or by rotating your full body. But if you have a seated experience, you can use the controller's grip button and the thumbsticks left and right and just do a snap rotation in there to quickly rotate to different areas. Feature 18 is that we want to avoid motion sickness and eye strain as much as possible. This is one of our important design principles for image gallery. What we do to improve the experience and to avoid motion sickness or eye strain is, for example, we fade images very smoothly out, we fade the new image very smoothly in, and that works very well for perception. Feature 19 is that everything you want to do in image gallery you can do with a single controller. You just have one hand your controller here, and if you don't want to see it when you watch images in full screen, you can easily enable and disable it just by a simple click. And if you have people that you just want to give your headset for watching an immersive gallery, but they're not familiar with VR controllers, what you can also do is you can set an automatic switching time for the next image. So if you want to show to your parents or your grandparents, for example, these images, just start the gallery, give them the headset, and everything will work automatically. You don't have the controller anymore. Feature number 20 is the pass-through mode. 
Many newer VR devices, they have lots of cameras for tracking and they also allow a video pass-through mode. And what you can do with that in image gallery is you can take your virtual cinema wall and put it in your living room and enable all the video streams out there. So it really feels like you have a really big TV when you enjoy the images in your own environment. So these are just 20 selected features from Ima Gallery. We will continue to update it, support it. We will provide you with more content and we will also continue to support the latest VR camera hardware. So thank you very much for watching. We hope you're as excited as we are. Please try out Ima Gallery. Thanks.